Oh, All right. You get you Welcome to Kabbalah of Adam. Today, one of the things we're going to, you know, this, our whole trek is taking us back into Metatron, which is one of my favorite places to be. Uh, because if, if we don't understand Metatron, you, you don't understand Torah and you can't understand God at all. So, we're back into it. And one of the things that I've tried to do and, and do in the past is use the Talmud as a proof text because uh, to show the holiness of the Talmud and the genius of the Talmud and that, that these guys were, were more than just men writing down thoughts um, and Musar and how to sell, what happens in divorce, what happens in this and all those things are true and all those things are Pashtun, you know, they're, they're just Pashat, you can learn them as that, but the secrets of Judaism and the secrets of the Talmudic mystic sages has been lost uh, for, for generations. Luckily, uh, our rabbi is one, and so he's able to teach it to me through the living transmission as he learned it, and we're able to, we are able to understand the Talmud from a whole different level. And so that's what we're going to do today is we're going to, we're going to, we're going to see the Metatron interface within Talmud. We've, we've seen it in Sanhedrin already, 38, where we studied it. We've seen it in Hagiga, which will make a reference back to Hagiga again. Um, with the, uh, the whole Pardes and the whole when Rabbi Akiva's explaining Siva Ot, that whole piece there, remember? And so today we will be in Yevamos and we will be also in Avodah Zarah. And I do realize that many of you watching do not have these books. And I was talking to Glenn earlier before class. So I'm going to, instead of just going into the piece you know, saying, thinking, oh, well, they can go look all this up and, and know the, know the backstory. I'm going to try to at least give you somewhat of a backstory before we get into these pieces, because these pieces are phenomenal. So without any further ado, let's say our prayer and let's get rolling. Ruler of the universe and master of all masters, father of mercy and forgiveness, we thank you, our God and the God of our fathers, by bowing down and kneeling, that you brought us closer to your Torah and your holy work, and that you enable us to take part in the secrets of your holy Torah. How worthy are we that you grant us with such a big favor? That is the reason we would plead before you that you will forgive and acquit all of our sins and they should not bring separation between you and us. And may it be your will before you, our God and the God of our fathers, that you will awaken and prepare our hearts to love and revere you. And may you listen to our utterances and open our closed heart to the hidden studies of your Torah. And may our study be pleasant before your place of honor as aroma of sweet incense. And may you emanate to us light from the source of our soul to all of our being. And may the sparks of your holy servants through which you revealed your wisdom to the world shine. And may their merit and the merit of their fathers and the merit of their Torah and holiness support us so we shall not stumble through our study. And by their merit, enlighten our eyes in our learning as stated by King David, the sweet singer of Israel, open my eyes so that I will see wonders from your Torah. Because from God's mouth he gives wisdom and understanding. May the utterance of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart find favor before you, God my strength and my redeemer. Amen. All right, here we go. Buckle up. If you would turn to Psalms 37 and verse 25. So turn to Psalms 27, 35. Uh, 37, sorry, Psalms 37, 37, Psalms 37 and 25. When you're, when you're there, let me know. Okay. It says, I have been a youth and also aged 
and I, but I have not seen a righteous man forsaken, nor his children begging bread. Okay? This is going to be our header. All right? Now, we, we know that if you think about this in a rational point of view, there have been what we would call righteous men that have had serious tragedy, right? And there has been uh, their children, you know, begging for bread, right? So what is this, what is this, what is he saying here? All right. Now, David writes the song. So there's this huge mock locate of who said this? Did David say it? And that's, so we're going to get into this whole thing. Now, there's things that we know. We know the word youth in Hebrew is na'ar, and na'ar is metatron. All right? So we're going to take this piece, and, and this, is a, this is a total Hashem piece. Uh, if we start at 23, by Hashem, ones shall inherit the earth. Uh, I mean, by Hashem are a man's footsteps established. And he shall favor his way. Should he totter, he will not be cast down. For Hashem supports his hand. And then it goes into our peace. I have been young and I am old. All right. So wrap our mind around that. And it's going to go. We're going to hyperlink all over from that point on. This verse, this one of this is one of the verses that is recited after the bracha over bread because of the last piece, nor his children begging for bread. All right. I have been a naar and also aged. It could have said, I have been a kid and now I'm an old man. They could have wrote it different. I was I was once a child, and now I'm an old man. All right? But that's not what it says. That's what we imply, which is where you all of a sudden get off track. You know? I, I was born, and I grew up, and, and that's it. That's not what it's saying. But it says also, it's, just a, it's making a juxtaposition of a youth versus the prospect of aging. Youth in this in this piece is very specific. The word na'ar also means a servant. Israel is a servant, right? David was a servant of Hashem. Everybody is a servant, which means everybody is a na'ar relative to God. Everybody is a servant of God. Yevamos, now, we will go to Yevamos. Go to, if you have Yevamos, it's book number 23 in your collection. If, if you guys want to, you can download Safari Talmud. I think the app is free. You can look these things up and follow along if you want. Go to 16B1. 16B1. Now, I'm not going to go into everything they are talking about, but they are disputing Solomon's slaves and this and that and the other. Because Solomon's slaves, and one said that they might not be accepted because of the daughters of Jerusalem, and it is understanding according to one which one says we may not accept converts from Tarmid because of Solomon's slaves. He maintains that if an idolater or slave cohabits with a Jewish, the child is a mom's heir, According to uh, Mamzer is a half-breed, half-goy, half-Jew, uh, which Yeshu Hanotri is one. However, according to the one that says we may not accept uh, converts from Tarmid because the daughters of Jerusalem, what is the concern? And so the rabbis, the rabbi Yosef and, and the rabbis disagree about the matter in the name of Rabbi Bahana, and it, there's, there's this and there's that, and they just, and then all of a sudden, Right in the middle of this, which they always do, 
They hide, they hide the secret to the peace right in the center. The Gomorrah expounds a verse that was cited earlier in 16a. Rav Shemuel bar Nachmani said in the name of Rav Yonason, the following verse was uttered by the minister of the world. Who is that? Who is the minister of the world? Metatron. I have been a youth and also aged, but I have not seen a righteous man forsaken nor his children begging for bread. For who else could have uttered it? If you say that the Holy One, blessed be he, uttered it, it's inconceivable. All right? See what they just did there? They just said <laughs> that the minister of the world uttered it, and then... And then they always do this. They push it aside and say, but if the Holy One said it, how can that be? They're, they're, they're telling you who that is. Rather, it must have been David who uttered it. But that too is inconceivable for he was not so old. Because he, he, he wrote this when he was not old. So we have a mock up. What are they? What are they doing? They have a mock. There, they have, they have uh, David, they have Metatron, and they have the Holy One of Israel. They just made a whole, not really a part suf, but a but a yesod, a spine. David's terahad yesod. You know, it's like having Sandalf on Metatron Octrail. They just went David, uh, uh, Minister of the World, the Holy One of Israel. Boom, boom, boom. They made the ladder right here. Okay, now, rather learn it from here that the minister of the world uttered it. You see how they just kind of pushed that aside and then they came back around and they said, oh, it was, it was the Sar Ha Olam. And, and uh, Metatron is called uh, the, the, the Sar Ha Panim. Who else was called Sar Ha Panim? Moshe Rabbeinu. Okay, so Yevamos, this verse was uttered by the Sar Ha'olam, Prince, Minister of the World. Who else could have said it? The lesser Metatron rules, is the one that rules Bia. And when I say Bia, I'm talking about Berea, Yetzirah, and Asiya, not Atsilu. Lesser, greater. Okay, that ratio is always there. And so what I did, I drew a little picture right up here on the board of like a swimming pool. And, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm using, this is Russell and this is Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> and if you see that my swimming pool is, is four foot deep here and Teresa's about five foot deep. So that makes her head out of water. Well, Russell is about six five. So this is say six foot deep. And so his head's out of water. All right. But if we look at this in a ratio, they're both in the pool. As it comes from Atsilut into Bia, so this is Atsilut, Berea, Yetzir, Asiya, because it comes into Katnut, it tightens up, it gets smaller. Greater Metatron becomes lesser Metatron by order of ratio. And as it goes back, expands up, so to speak, or into deeper, deeper realms, it too expands. So it's only in ratio. Is it David is lesser Metatron and Metatron is greater Metatron. But greater Metatron is only lesser Metatron as compared to in greater Metatron. To. In relationship to. It's always a ratio. Okay? Depends on where you are and who you are. Whether it's whether it's the whether it's people, whether it's the Orphim, the Hyot, the Seraphim, whether it's the Spherot, whether it's Ak, Atik, it doesn't matter. It's always a ratio. So it is going up and going down. Remember in Ezekiel when he's going in his visions and he says, It was a will within the will, and I saw the angels running and returning. They were running and returning. So, so this circuitry, 
this God circuitry is always running and returning wherever he needs to be, wherever it needs to be at that time, whether it's taking information up, whether it's sending information back. It's called running and returning. This is young to old. Young to old. Young to old. Boom, boom, boom. Lesser, greater, lesser, greater. All right? And the word in Hebrew, risto, risto vashov, is running and returning. The, the gematria of risto is 314. The gematria of Shaddai is 314. The gematria of Metatron is 314. Okay? So what it's showing is the oscillation of God coming in, going out. When he comes in, it's the lesser Havaya. When it goes out, you know, it's always in ratio, running and returning. These are the angels. The angels, the angels are nothing more than the neural spinal network of Metatron. If he wants to show up as and destroy something, he'll show up as Gabriel. If he wants to show up and heal something, he'll show up as Raphael. If he wants to come up and uh, give Sarah a child, he'll show up as Mikhail. Just, it, it's always a ratio of what he needs. This is his Sivaot, his armies. Okay? <clears throat> they are not, in this piece, they are not rejecting it they are only concealing the fact of who it is. They always do that. They, but what they in in concealing it, they have built the whole part Sufi. You know, they have built the whole ladder. By saying, oh, it's it's not that, but it could be this, but it could be that. Oh, but it was this. And what they're doing is is building it up in the worlds of Bia. Okay. Now. There is a, uh, a writing called Midrash, Tan Midrash Tanhuma. It says that this Pusik refers to the time of Adam to Mashiach. I was young and now I'm old. From Adam to Mashiach. Because we have David in here and Havayah, Metatron, is Adam. And... Adam was 930 years and David was 70. I was young and I was old because that whole 1,000 is Keter, all right? So Adam, that's why you have to bring David into this because it's, it's what completes the whole thing. Now, you have to understand, and we're going to get in this toward the end of the class, is what the, the main question is, how did it fall? How did, what is the hat of Adam? How in the world did Adam fall? What was Adam trying to do? Now you have to understand, Adam has 974 generations of falling before he ever got the baton. All right? And then there's 26 generations to Moses, okay? When he gets the baton, all right? So, so they're all trying to fix something. And it all appears that they fall. It appeared that Noah fell. It appeared that Abraham fell. It appeared that Jacob. It appeared that Joseph it appeared that It appears that Moses fell. It appears that all of them fall. But you have to understand, they are running a fault line that's, that was created from never not, from the first Simpson, the first separation. There's, there's, there's a crack. There's always a, a crack there. And they're always in that rut, so to speak, because that's the lane that they have to work in. All right? So it says, this is the ratio of, of, um, um, of Metatron. Yet never did I see God leave the world without Siddiquim. Okay? Never did I. So Metatron's saying, I've been young and I've been old, and never did I see God leave the world without a tzaddikim in it. A tzaddik yesod olam is Metatron. That's, the, that's one of his names. Tzaddik yesod olam. Metatron's all, he's all, God has always had the Metatron interface in the world since never not. Why? 
because there's nothing here but God. So he's always here. It's the foundation channel of the world, which is Bia, Berea, Yitzir, and Asiya. This is Atreel, Metatron, Sandalphon, called Sulam Yaakov, Jacob's Ladder. Which Sulam is also the same gematria as Sinai. The sages say, Adam, David, Mashiach share the same mission. Now, if you take A-D-M, Adam, David, Mashiach, share the same mission, what does that spell? Adam. Because they are the same person from 930 to 70, as I explained. The Metatronic names are the essence of David and Adam. Those are Metatron names. The Peshat of Forsaken is in 4D. Because 4D in 4D space-time. Not 3D. But 4D is always connected to 3D. So in 4D, that statement right there is absolutely 100% perfect. Right? Right? Uh, I've been young and I've been old and I've never seen this world without a tzaddik and there's no begging for bread, right? When it goes into 3D, now it's got to go into 3D and things change. Without Metatron, there is no communication between us and Adam or Adam to us. The backside is only a shadow of each of the corresponding levels above it. So Berea, so Berea is only the shadow of Atzilut, yet Sira is only the shadow of Berea, and Asiya is only the shadow of Yetzira. And we are only the shadow of that. Matter of fact, we are not even in yet, uh, uh, Asiya. We are in Flatland. We are, we are in the shadow of that. Because to, to get in the Masa Merkava and ride the chariot, so to speak, you've got to get into a sea of first. Now, they, we call this world uh, Olam Hazed, this, this world. We call it a sea, but really, we're on the outer, we're in the klepa of it. We're not really even in it. So this these edge, every edge that every shadow of every edge is called a karuv, right? Every karuv is the next layer. Every karuv is a shaddai. This metatronic layer, this metatronic layer, like rings in a tree. And if you ever remove a yud from any of those layers, you automatically have shade. Demon. You automatically have its corresponding backside. So if you take a tzaddik out of that area, or a covenant out of that area, or a bris out of that area, or any of the other things that we've studied, it automatically goes to shade. The yud is the tzaddik olam. The word, um, the, the word tzaddik has has been dumbed down to and generalized now. You know, oh, he's a tzaddik. Oh, he's a tzaddik. Oh, he's a tzaddik. Probably not. It's been dumbed down and generalized to in the same terms as the word akum. They use akum for anybody who's not a Jew. Oh, he's an akum. He's an akum. Well, if you learn it that way, if you learn that all non-Jews are Akum, your Torah that's coming out is there's only Jews and only Akums. You'll never, you'll never get out of that. It's impossible. You, you don't have a clue of the whole spectrum of Paroma of non-Jews. The whole, it's the whole Gersugia. That's why they don't understand it, because they've been taught Akum. And, and no crease fade in him and, and, and all the way through. So even, the, so even the term tzaddik has been misused and generalized as we, as we now know it. 
The Rizal says, concerning the Hashmal, the Hayot return running to and fro is already known. The human is synthesized or brought from 3D to 4D. And all the Malachim, as it is written, the bodies of the Hayot, even though they do not have a body, their body relative to their soul is the same. So everything made in the image of image of uh, God is everything is made in the image of Adam. That is in the in the Enoch three. It says that image is Metatron. So it's all the Hayot da, 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 till you get to us. So everything has its relative body and soul. Moving to, from toward Din to Hesed. This is Risto Vashov, running and returning, 3D to 4D. It, uh, what happens in one happens in the other. When Israel raises their voice, they sing. But it is not with what we call speech. It goes up to their heads to the curtain, from the curtain to the supernal sandalphon. It takes their prayers and turns them into crowns, and then, uh, and then the, and then the, and the, the lower Adam has a higher dimensional form from the five worlds. Each lower form has some of the higher form shape. This is why King David says, "Hashem bless my soul five times <clears throat> from the world of Asiya." Yitzira, Berea, Atzilut, Adam Kadmo. Because he knows his image is in each one of those worlds. Because he is a fractal of all of it. This is also why there are five immersions of the Kohen Gadol. And this is also why there are five afflictions on Yom Kippur. One for each world. The human has a fractal of all five worlds contained in them. And this is why we were created last. Adam was created, at, you have to understand, Adam wasn't just created on the sixth day. Adam's being created every single day. It was just completed on the last day. He's creating the whole thing. This is, this is why it says there is a ladder to ascend and descend through it. This is the cosmic sulam. Rabbi Ishmael says, now we remember we've been studying Rabbi Ishmael. He was in Brakot 7, you know, he goes in and blesses, blesses uh, Octriel, right? In, in every, every man has a house in, has a ladder in his house. Every man, every man has a ladder in his house. Now, we can go off on a tangent of what house is, but for those that know, know, right? So you can utilize the same technology that they're using in this manner. To use this to interconnect the light energies of the worlds. Then... If, this, if you take Sulam and, and with Sulam without a Vav, its gematria is 130. What do we know about 130? 130 is also gematria of Sinai. What do we know about 130? Adam in, uh, uh, in, in the river, 130 years. Jacob lived 130 years. And 5 times 26, 26 of the Havaya is 130. So everything is Adam. Everything is the five times 26, okay? Psalmic Yud Nun Yud. Adam is, Adam is purifying the Sulam in the river. That's what he's doing. He's purifying himself, right? He's purifying the Adamic time. This is the secret of Sinai. When they went up, they had to go through... How many levels? 
49. Counting the Omer. 49 is Gematria Memtet Metatron. They're going through the Metatronic ladder. Seven times seven, seven times seven, seven you know, each one of these things, that's counting the spherot. You know, everybody says, oh, 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 we don't believe in Kabbalah. We don't believe in Kabbalah. Do you count the Omer? You bet you do. It's pure Kabbalah. To, and day 50, when they get their mountaintop experience, 50 is Bina, 50 gates, right? This is, this is the whole Metatronic interface of cleaning up the ladder of the Sulam of the Klippa to, to receive the Torah. The purpose of Sinai was so that Adam could be taken back, which is which fractaled into Israel. It, Adam, it was supposed to be done had it not been for the golden calf. It, was, it would have been it. The purpose of Sinai was not to give the Torah. The purpose was for Adam to be sucked back out. Only when it collapsed did Torah A fall into Torah B, and then you had to write the book. That's why, Russell, we talked about the Paleo language. That's the very reason. It was not supposed to be. That's why all the Holy Scriptures are now written in the broken Torah, the, the, the broken script. Yeah. Broken script. It was not the giving of the Torah commandments. That's what happens only after the prolapse. It had to be given to sustain 3D at the time. The word Metatron. If you take out the two T's, you are left with the word Ramon. A Ramon in Hebrew is a, you know this one? Pomegranate. pomegranate. How many seeds does a pomegranate have in it? This is the aspect of the angel Nuriel. This is why high is nine plus nine because the two tets are nine plus nine, which is 18, the spine. So the two T's are the spine that's in Metatron. 18 is the word high, life. It's, it's, it's all there. This is what it means. The high oak were running and returning through the 18. It jumps out 9 plus 9. 9, 9. Which sphere wrote is the ninth one? Yes, yes owed. 9 and 9. Male and female. Running and returning. Making a zivu. That's the secret of the matter. It's really up in the spine, but, you know, upper your soul, lower your soul. Upper your soul, lower your soul. When it leaves, all that it's left with, when they're running and returning, it's left with ritzo. This is the word. Ritzo vesho. Running and returning. Is Gematria 297, which is... Nurael is 296 plus the Koel. So this is the angel Nurael, which is the one that's responsible. I guess he's the, he's the track star, you know. Ritzo is running Nurael 296. If you add Vashov to it, the Gematra is 314, Metatron. So even in the words that they're saying, they, it all adds up from a math perspective, from a gematria perspective. This is the running and returning on the 18 of the spine of Metatron, which is Yesod Olam, the minister of the worlds, which is what that piece is discussing. It is the yud heh vav -Heh, of Metatron, and it is David, young and old. Now, we, we, are, we are still on the same piece, but we are going to even go deeper. 
if I tell you what, we will uh, we're going to read. We're going to read the piece. We're going to study. We're going to read. Uh, we're in a Vodazoa. So if you have a Vodazoa, we're in B three B two, three B two. I'm going to read this piece. And then we're going to circle back around and I'm explain from chapter two on, just so we have it clear in our minds. Okay. Uh, it, it, it on three B two at the top, see where it says, uh, let us cut our cords off. This is, this is, uh, when the messianics figure out that they're not Jews anymore and God, uh, you mean they cut them off their belt loops? Yeah. They have to cut them off. So anyway, it's, it, it, and, and what happens at that time, the Talmud says, blessed be he, the, and the Holy One, blessed be he, sits and laughs. As it is stated, he who sits in the heavens will laugh. Well, what happened in, in uh, uh, Hagiga in 15 when, when Akher, when Benabuya goes in and Metatron's sitting on the throne and it says, oh, there's no sitting in heaven. He who sits in heaven will laugh. And regarding this verse, Rav Yitzhak said, The Holy One, blessed be he, does not have laughter except for that one day alone. The Gomorrah challenges Rav Yitzhak's statement. It is indeed so that there are that there is never laughter in the presence of Hashem except for one day. But Rav Yehuda said in the name of the Rav, the day is comprised of 12 hours. During the first three hours of the day, the Holy One, blessed be he, sits and involves himself with Torah study. During the second three hours of the day, he sits, he sits and judges the world. Once he sees the world is deserving of annihilation, he stands up from the throne of judgment, which he was sitting, and sits instead on the throne of mercy. How many thrones are up there? Don't say water, water. Mm -hmm. There's one throne. Mm -hmm. During the third uh, three-hour period of the day, he sits and provides nourishment to the entire world. From the horns of the A-ring to the eggs of lice. Uh, so it's like a big animal reindeer thing so it's talking about from the biggest animal to the eggs of life so from the smallest to the largest he's he's uh providing nourishment during the fourth three hour period of the day he sits and amuses himself which is the same root word as they're using for laughter he amuses himself with leviathan uh-oh. See how they just throw it in here? Boom, Leviathan. What is Leviathan? Knowledge. It's, it's da'at. As it is stated, you created this Leviathan to sport with. The word sport here is the same root word as laughter in Hebrew. Thus, we see that God amuses himself i.e. he laughs during every portion of the day. How then can you say that there is never amusement in the presence of Hashem aside from one day? The Gemara answers. And here we go. Rob Nachman Bar Yitzhak says, he laughs with all his creatures every day. But about his creatures. This is an account of the sins that they have committed. He only laughs that one day alone. The Gomorrah questions a statement that God amuses himself. Rav Aki said, and then, uh, said to Rav Nachman Bar Yitzhak, from the day the Holy Temple was destroyed, there is no laughter for the Holy One, blessed be he. 
Before clarifying his question, the Gomorrah provides a source for the statement. And from where do we know that there is no laughter after destruction? The Gomorrah suggests a possible source uh, it, to immediately uh, uh, repudiate, it, repudiate it. If you wish to say, it is derived from that which is written. And Hashem, God of legions, called out on that day, the day the temple was destroyed, for weeping and for utilizing, eulogizing and for baldness, etc. Perhaps it was only for that day that Hashem called for mourning, for mourning and no more. This verse does not prove laughter ceased permanently with the destruction of the temples. The Gomorrah examines a second possibility. They're building it. Because what they're fixing to do is come in and slide in the secret. They do it every single time. Genius. Rather, we can derive it from that which is written. If, you, if I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand wither. May my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth if I do not remember you. The Gomorrah rejects this source as well. Perhaps the verse means only that there is no forgetting the destruction. But it is possible that there is still laughter. The Gomorrah concludes, rather, the source from this verse, I have long kept silent, I have been still, and I have restrained myself, having shown that Hashem has indeed not laughed since the time of destruction. And uh, ask Rav Nachman Bar Yitzhak, but if so, that there is no laughter in the presence of Hashem since the day of destruction, what does God do in the fourth day of every quarter? If he's not laughing, and it says he's laughing, then what in the world is God doing in the last part of the day? And it's Because it says he laughs with all his creatures. What is he doing? What is he doing the first part of the day? He's studying Torah. Right? And then, he's, and then he judges the world, and then he sees the world needs to be destroyed, and then he says, oh, better give him mercy. So then he gives him mercy, and then he plays with Leviathan. He's like a Labrador, you know? Then he plays with Leviathan, which is this cosmic thing. And he laughs with his creatures. But he only laughs at them on this day, which is the day he's going to wipe it out. And what is that? What is the laughter? It's the Guvarot, pain. There's Guvarot is pain or pleasure. Pleasure is laughter. When the Guvarot snaps back into 4D, it's laughter. That's why he laughs on this day. All right? It's cosmic. So let's look here. What does he do on the fourth day? He sits and teaches the school children Torah. What are school children? To whom shall one teach knowledge? This is a huge mock locate right now between the Jew and the Akum, if he can stay Torah, right? Who gets to get the knowledge? Who does God teach knowledge to? You know, of course, if you read the Pusik right before this, Rabbi Mayer comes up and says, oh, even an idolater that studies Torah, he's like a coin god doll. Oh, and they, oh, oh, what are you talking about? It's, it's setting up this piece right here. It's not not true, because it says in Leviticus 18.5, I believe, that every man shall live, every human. It doesn't say Adam there. It's like every human shall live by the Torah. Of course. Jews are just commanded. To whom shall we teach knowledge? To whom does one explain a message? To those weaned from mother's milk, removed from the breast. Well, who is that? We expound this verse to mean, to whom does God teach knowledge? The word here is Atika Shadaim. What do we know about Atika Shadaim? If we broke those two words up, Atika, we have Atikio Mim and Atika Kadesha, and Arikon Pim. Those are part Seuss of Keter. And then Shaddai, 
right? And then Shadaim, her breast, right? Bina, Ema, mother, right? So these people, this is talking about the Mohim, Atika Shadaim. To whom does he explain the message? To those who are weaned from mother's milk, removed from the breast, the Gomorrah asked. And initially, before the destruction of the temple, who was teaching the school children? The Gomorrah answers. And here it comes. If you prefer, remember I was telling you this morning? So, so we're fixing to see how this genius of the sages stack the answers. They're all true. If you prefer, Tiblob shoot, light overlapping. If you prefer to say, the angel Metatron taught them. If you prefer to say that God did both. So who was teaching them? Was Metatron teaching them? Or was God teaching them? Yes. Yes. <laughs> he amuses himself with Leviathan, the knowledge of his Torah. And teaching his children. That's fun. That's, that's fun to him. He gets off on it. And simultaneously taught the children. Uh, he, he amuses himself with Leviathan. And simultaneously teaches his school children Torah. Thus far the Gomorrah has discussed God's schedule. So to speak during the day. And the Gomorrah now inquires about his activities at night. Kasha time. Is there night in Atilut? If God's all light, is there night? You, 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 see the, you see the issue here? By night, what does God do? The Gemara answers. If you prefer to say, he follows the same schedule he does in the day. <laughs> you, see, you see how they just go. It's, it's incredible. If you prefer to say, he rides upon his fast caroving and flies 18,000 worlds. Uh-oh, he's running and returning. Because thousand is Keter. As it is stated, God's entourage is Midrets, thousands of angels. Shinon. Don't read it, the Hebrew word Shinon, but read it rather as Shinon, which means... They are, which means they're not. So basically, what it what it is is uh, one is one is eighteen and the other is two thousand, and that's twenty thousand. If you take two thousand two thousand off twenty thousand, because a a, a a midrad is twenty thousand. But if don't read it like that, read it like this. Take the two thousand off. It's eighteen. They're they're making a formula. Third answer, if you prefer. Say, during the night, God sits and listens to songs out of the mouth of the holy Chayo. As it is stated, in that day, Hashem commands his kindness in the night with so of, of songs is with me. So, he, so he's so he got Metatron and the Hyotes playing, right? He's got his rock band going at night. What is he doing? Running and returning, studying Torah, teaching the, teaching the school children. Now, Here's what is cool about this piece. How much time we got? Because we got lots of notes. Okay. Okay. So go back to 2A2. Remember, this is where this piece that we just read, that this piece that we just read comes when Mashiach comes. Mashiach's Metatron. Adam. David. Right, and it says, and they come immediate. Uh, they come. In, it's two a two at the bottom of the page. Immediately, the idol worshippers will gather in disarray. Remember that word is erbuvia, like erbra, evil mixture, erbuvia. You can hear it in the word. And the holy one, Kodesh Boko, is sitting there with a safer Torah in his bosom, like this. Well. The Christians think it's the New Testament, the King James Bible, and and Islam thinks it's uh, the Quran, and the Jews know it's Torah. So Esau, which is Christianity, comes in first. 
and says, oh, we've done everything you've asked us. And y'all can go read it. And he goes, yeah, you didn't do this. You didn't do that. You didn't do that. You did it all for yourselves. All right. And then Ishmael comes, Persia comes. Oh, we did this all for the Jews. We did this and we did that. We did it all for the Jews. He goes, oh, you didn't do this. You didn't do this. You didn't do this. Later. All right. And he makes them all get in a line. And the Messianics come up. And says, oh, we did this and we did that. And he says, okay, I'll tell you what. If uh, and, and, then, and then he quotes um, Isaiah, I think it's uh, 44. It's uh, Isaiah 43, 9, I guess, where he quotes, he goes, he asked him, he goes, did you disseminate, he's holding it, he goes, did you disseminate this? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, we did. Well, they think it's their Bible. And then he shows them it's the Torah. Did you disseminate this? Let me look at it. Uh, let me look at it in uh, Isaiah right quick. Yeah, Isaiah 43, 9. The nations were gathered together and all the regimes assembled. Among them, who could have declared this? And let us hear the early prophecies. Let them bring their witnesses and let them be vindicated. Of course, the witnesses the Talmud says, are their feast days. Of course, the Messies are going to say, oh, oh, we do all the feast, right? You know, they don't, we don't have Christmas tree. Oh, we don't do all that. Oh, we don't do Easter, you know? Okay. And, and he says, you, and he says, it's true. You are my witnesses about, about the, the, the witnesses that come are the sun and the moon and the earth and, and all the, all the creation, all the witnesses. You are my witnesses. This is verse 10 in Isaiah 43. The word of Shem, my servant whom I have chosen, so that you will know and believe in me and understand that I am he. Before, before me, nothing was created by a God, nor will there be after me. I, only I am Hashem. There is no deliverer aside from me. All right? I am Havayah. There is no Savior but me. So that's what he says there. And he says, and uh, he says, and this, this is the Torah Moses said. Okay, so then they get all huffy and puffy, and he says, you didn't even keep the Sheva Mitzvah's Noach. That's 2B4. You didn't even keep, you didn't even do, you couldn't even be a simple Noahide. You couldn't even do it. All right? So then they have this, they have this mock locket about do Noahides get, get a reward in the world to come? And one says no, one says yeah. And, and uh, Rebbe Mayer comes, e even a idol worshiper who occupies himself with Torah is like a Kohen Gadol. The, the Torah therefore states regarding my laws of Torah, which is Leviticus 18.5, you shall observe my decrees and my laws, which man shall carry out and by which man shall live. It does not say Kohanim, Levite, Israelite. Rather, it states man. Thus we have learned that even an idol worshiper who occupies himself with Torahs like a Kohen Gadol, apparently even idol worshippers do receive a reward for keeping the Sheva Mitzvahs. Now, of course, there's a big sugi that goes along with that um, and, and a lot of learning. Number one, if you're doing that, you are not an idolater. That's the kicker. So then God says, well, I'll tell you what you can do. Go build a sukkah. And they go build a sukkah. And he unleashes the sheath of the sun. And the sun gets like seven times hotter than normal. And they, they slam the door of the sukkah. And they leave. And they cut their tzitzis off. Because God makes it unbearable for them. Then right after that, it starts talking about converts. Gary. We're not making any garing during the time of Mashiach. Why? You should have done it earlier. And there's a huge mock locket uh, on, on 3B1. It says all the dollars will become gar. Garing. We will not be an accepted garing if you read it in the Hebrew right there. It doesn't say gertzedics. It says garing. During the Messianic era. 
Similar to they did not accept uh, Gerim, neither did the time of King David or did the, did the time of Solomon. But we know that both of them made a lot of Gerim. But not once it's initiated, not once the Messianic era is done. There's this whole thing about uh, this, this, is, this is during Gog and Magog. Immediately upon seeing their actions and, and they're kicking the deal, it says the Holy One, blessed be he, sits and laughs about them. And it says he who sits on the throne will laugh. Then we get right into this piece on that I just read to you about what God does during the day. We, we, we had to look at his schedule. When does he laugh? You know? When's he laugh at the messies? And we had to look at all this stuff. And then we figure out, well, who's teaching all this? Who? Oh, it's Metatron. Oh, but you can say it's God if you want. And so now let's get into the notes. Avodazor, 3B2, laughter. One. He laughs all the time, every day. Why not? The other type is when he laughs at his creation. When they shut the door of the sukkah. That's because 3D is going into 4D. This is the final laugh. The last neat soap sparks have been stripped out. There are 12 hours in the day and 12 hours in the night. We set it as the opposites but to, uh, or a complementary part. Because before the fall, there is no, bin before the fall, you would have had no binary knowledge of this. You know, there is no night and day in God's world. But night is only the inner lining of day falling out. It's only the guvaro. If you prefer means to superimpose one on the other. Hiblob shoot, light overlaps. The pleroma, you have to look at holographic layers. Don't say water, water. Don't say, oh, well, there's Metatron and there's God. You know, there's lesser Metatron and the, you, you can't do that. That is what happened to Akher. And I have a great uh, visualization so you can, you ever... You ever been out on the beach and big waves and you can't see the ocean because of the waves? Right? Is the wave not the ocean? Every wave is just part of the ocean. You know? A drop of water in the ocean is the ocean. That's the relationship we have to look at. A super position of waves. The, the closest part of the ocean that hits you is a wave. That's lesser Metatron. It's still the ocean. The Benish High says on Hagiga, which is the part in the Pardes, Hagiga 15. On Metatron, it was taught in Abrisa. The four entered the Pardes. Our teacher, Chaim Vital, wrote in the Gates of Holiness. The fourth gate that he wrote was a meditation on how to do this and was censored. Right now, we, we have it now, but it was censored, which in Kabbalah is called the ascent into the Pardes. This in the world, this is in the world of Yetzira, the world of Metatron. In order to do this, they would use specific techniques to open up these gates from the from Olam Ha Shafel, the flatland world. And they would go from flatland to Asiya and Yitzira and construct unifications through their coordinate and the spherot of Yitzira that they would use. Using Perke Hehalot, the chapters of the palaces, which is a, a book they have, like Perke Avot, it's called the, chap, the chapters of the palaces. Rabbi Akiva and, and Rabbi Yehuda, etc. And the book of Enoch is part of this literature. That's all part of the gestalt of this literature. 
In the, in the Arizal's commentary on Perky Avo, there is a Mishnah. Anyone who engages in Torah for her, own, for her own sake, for Torah's sake, not for your sake, for her sake, gains many things. This is doing Torah for the sake of heaven, L'shem Shemayim. And, and they went in to understand the, the sod, the inner sod, the panini of spirituality. Now, I found something a while ago. Real quick, since we're here on this panini, if you have a, a you may not have your Vodazoa. Do you have your Vodazoa? Will you? Look on 3A1. Three A one. Look at note five. This is important because this is talking about the non-Jew that studies Torah is like the Kohen Gadol. What is he doing? You see the note on three A three uh, three A one note five. See where it says this is derived from the verse and, um, when, when they're talking about um, the Kohen Gadol here. This is derived from the verse that states in Proverbs 3.15, it, the Torah, is mo, more precious than panin, paninim, pearls, literally pearls. The inner lining is the sowed. This, what Rebbe Mayer is talking about, is guys that go in and study the secrets of Torah. What the other guys are talking about is guys that just stay in the basic seven laws. Oh, they got no, there's, there's no reward. You got to go on the inner. So that's what Rabbi Akiva and the, the, the four that went in the Pardes were doing. They were going into the inner soul of spirituality. These four masters of wisdom looked through Ruach HaKodesh using the Masa Merkava, the way of the chariot, let's call it. They went to fix the sin of Adam, the Chet of Adam. That's what they went in to do. How do we fix what Adam did? The act of destruction. This is a big task, right? What's what everybody wants to do? How do we pick up the pieces, do the mitzvahs? Three of them made a mistake in the order of tikkun. And Benabuyas was the greatest. Akers was the greatest. And the klipa grabbed him. This is the Benish Hot. The tikkun that Akiva made was greater than all of them. Therefore, when the Arizal says that he, he went in to understand the secrets, this was their intent. But they have to make tikkun in the head of Adam to grasp the panimi, the, the inner sowed, and vice versa. If you don't got the sowed, you can't do the tikkun. If you don't do the tikkun, you can't get the, the sod. Since they were not successful making tikkun of Adam first, they were not able to grab the inner secret successfully. The greatest secret of all is this. What was Adam thinking? Right? It's the greatest secret of all. If you had to ponder one thing in Torah... It would be, what was Adam thinking? Because if you ever figured that out, the rest of the Torah don't matter. It's complete. There were four men. There were four worlds. Each had a Bia to deal with. Asiya, Yitzira, Berea, Atzilu. Akiva enters in peace and left in peace. Why does it say peace twice. Why does it say enter and why does it say leave? Because shalom is a code for Yesod Olam. Yesod Olam, who is the Tsar of Yesod Olam? Metatron. Yesod Olam is Hokmah called Shalom. 
with its teret hayesod. And it, he brought it into Yesod Bina, also called Shalom. That is the sign, the oat, that he is discussing in Hagiga 16, which is Metatron. What did he do? He took Metatron and he took, he took Abba and Ema and made a union through Metatron. That's the Yesod Olam. That's why it went in and it left. I don't have to go any further describing what's going on. This is what it is teaching in Avodazoa 3b3. Who was he teaching? Who does he teach? Who is Metatron teaching? School children. Atika Shadaim removes from the mother's milk. Rashi says, those are the people who have not turned to wickedness. Those are also the people that have turned away from wickedness. Right? If, if Ipso facto. Rabali says, these are the three mohim. Hokma, Bina, Das. Go to Isaiah. We're going to finish this piece while the, while the flow is flowing. Is that, is that cool? That's cool. Go to Isaiah 28. Go to Isaiah 28 and verse 9. And this is where the Pusik from Avodazoa gets its term. To whom shall one teach knowledge? And this is the biggest question the Jews have today. And it's right there in the Pusik of the, of the Ger in Avodazoa 3. Whom shall we teach the knowledge? To whom shall one explain a message? This is uh, Isaiah 28, 9. Those who are weaned from mother's milk removed from the breast. Now read verse 10 just for grins. For it is a commandment by commandment commandment by commandment, line by line, line by line. How do we study, guys? Line by line, line by line. Bit here and a bit there. Now, that's Isaiah talking about who you teach. And then we found over here in Avodazoa that it's Metatron doing the teaching, or you can say it's God, whatever you prefer. Mm -hmm. Whatever makes you happy, okay? But then there's these school children. Well, who are they? Oh, well, Rashi says, oh, those are people who have not turned, to, not turned to wickedness. So guess what? Ipso facto, those who have turned away from wickedness would still be the same people. Get ready, hold your hats. The word instruct or teach, the word is really instruct, but here it's the word teach is hokma. Knowledge in verse 9 is the ot. Explain means to understand is the word for understanding. There's Bina. That's ones who have their mind. Atika Shadaim. Atika Shadaim, because we're using Atika Kadesha. This is the Mohim. They're building the Mohim. One who's got their brain ready for Torah. This also correlates with the ears, nose, and mouth, Sog, Ma, and Ben, the, of the Ozen Pei that we've gone over on, on our board. These are the three worlds, Berea, Yitzira, Sia, of Adam, of, I mean, I mean uh, the, the Sog, Ma, and Ben are the three worlds of Ak, and then the message is the hearing of the ears. So Isaiah 28 9 through 10. These mohim have to be aroused. That is what is necessary to give a foolish person wisdom. So if you, once you realize you don't know anything, you can learn Torah. And bring them to youth. As soon as you realize, I don't care how old you are, 
when you realize you don't know anything, you are youth. You're a baby. You're a toddler. You're a three-year-old. When Rabbi first started teaching me, he had to teach me like a three-year-old. I was young, and now I'm old. It's about Torah. I was a school children. Who is Metatron teaching? The school children. That which appears double, removed from milk and wean, isn't that the same thing? If you're weaned, you're removed from milk. And if you're removed from milk, aren't you weaned? Those that will be weaned from milk will become, will be removed from the breast, meaning they will receive the secrets of a tikiomim two times. It is this is two times everything is said, which is shadaim the two breast. Commandment to commandment, commandment to commandment. Right, left, right side, commandment, commandment. Left side, commandment, commandment. Two times. Right, because there's Hasidim and Gubrot on both sides, and line by line. Line by line, bit by bit, they built a part suit. They will shed the lights on the heads of the breast of the supernal source that's nursing. In the secret of Atika Shadaim, as it says, commandment by commandment, and so on. The secret of the matter is this. In the world of Asiya, the Klippa is great, and you need double light to stand against it. In order to teach the simple ones and the foolish ones called the Narim or the youth, the school children. It is known in Asiya that Adonai is operative. Adonai is 65. You add L to it. L is 31, which is 96, which is the word Sav, which is commandment. L Adonai. You need, to, you need double strength and power from the right and left. The strength of Kedusha in the world, because this is the world of evil. That's why it says two times on the right, two times on the left. You are taking the light from the externals, which is from the backside of Sav in Asiya. And it is what is given power and divinity to the Sitra Akra. The term Sav is alluding to a Boda Zoa. And then in the fourth quarter, it is the two that are one. It's both. And the Torah is amazing. The Talmud will blow your mind. And I'll see you next week.